Hello, everyone. <clears throat> Let's give me one moment here. I just need to turn something off. And I want to do one thing. Hi, Mary Jane. Um, I just have to do something here. And I'm just doing... Hi, Karen. Okay. Hopefully this is going to work here. Hi, Gladys. Okay, I need to... My eyes have gone wonky, so it's hard for me to read the chat. So I'm just going to try to get the chat bigger so I can read it. Well, that really didn't do anything. <laughs> well, let's try that again and see what I can do here. Um, I'm doing a test here. And... Okay, I think I might have found a solution to me being able to read the chat. Okay, now I can see it better. Now if I can just figure out how I did that other thing. Come on, let's go. Okay, um, tonight is sort of just a, a test and um, a, sort of what I've been up to. Well, that's not moving. Okay. Um, okay. Um, I've just been playing around and I've been working on things, seeing as how I haven't been on for a while, and uh, a couple of things kind of popped up here about uh, health things and everything and so I'm trying to get back into everything and um, thank you for the likes um, I am feeling much better I still have my times that, okay, I'm being able to read the chat here now. I've got it big enough so I can read it. Um, yeah, I had a lot of problems with medications and everything, and I kept reacting to them. And uh, and then not too long ago, a couple of weeks ago or whatever, I ended up with whatever that was. It wasn't COVID, but it was a chest infection and everything. And, of course, I had to go on to ant on antibiotics for that. Um, in the background, you can probably see I've been working on, if I can, yeah, my memory's going here too. Um, um, I've been, I got my butterfly quilt finished and I, uh, churn dash blocks. That's what they are, churn dash blocks. And so I've been working on those, but <clears throat> Pardon me. I've been doing them a different way. You know how everybody says, you know, there are no rules to um, quilting? Well, I think I broke a few of them doing what I'm doing here, but um, I have decided that I am uh, switching things that instead of doing blocks the usual way I'm converting a block and doing it paper piecing which that's the way uh, the way I find it uh, has sunk into my brain and I've all of those blocks there have all been done with paper piecing and it's just a regular block and I found that the way I've worked everything out, that I can make a block, not have to follow the instructions that they give me, and I can make a block any size I want. 
and I do use um, the Silhouette software um, to do a lot of my designing and actually just let me switch down to the desk here and okay so and I know my camera is not looking so good can everybody hear me okay Hopefully you can. But anyway, these are the um, templates that I make. And they're for cutting my fabric. And then I've made templates for the paper piecing. And what I've been working on tonight is I've been using these fabrics, a print fabric, and I wanted to fussy cut them because everything goes all over the place on these little emblems here but when I cut out my pieces I wanted to make sure that I had you know a, a piece that had some of these in it so I designed my templates to be able to fussy cut because they're all designed to be cut um, the fabric is to be cut with the right side of the fabric up so I was able to fussy cut areas of this fabric and uh, the block oh this actually is the um, old maid block and I think that's the one I have on my um, the thumbnail picture on the on the live video so uh, I've cut out some of them and uh, the I'm using freezer paper, of course, because you know, um, you know that uh, I am a freezer paper junkie. If you don't know me, so and this is um, this is the printout that I did for myself. And when I'm doing my um, FPP, I look at the finished block, what I want it to be. And here I have images of the way I'm going to put them together. And this image is using the fabrics and everything that I have. And I'll just try to, I can't zoom in my, where is it? Let me go back to the other screen with the laptop there. And hopefully you can see that. So that's what my block is going to look like, and it's the old made block. And anybody coming on that wants to share their channel, I'm quite okay with it. Um, the other thing is... Uh... Okay, thanks everyone. Um, so now I'm I'm just going to show you that I have used I guess I should change the camera right good grief okay so I have the templates that I make they're pressed onto with the freezer paper and everything I can read I have cut out all the little pieces and everything and uh, this is all my blue fabric I do have more blue fabric that's been already cut and these are my fussy cuts from the print and so all I did with these was um, there's a solid black line on the ones that I designed and so everything is going to be cut out along the solid black line and I'm leaving the black line on there and rather than trying to see if I'm cutting it right and not cutting off the back line black line I've designed it so you line up either the quarter inch mark or the eighth of an inch mark on your ruler and just peek to the side and if it lines up that's where you cut it rather than trying to uh, you know cut without cutting 
your black line off. And so that's, I just pressed all my fabrics on. And uh, you don't have to be extremely accurate with this, but uh, I've designed it so that I'm not wasting a whole bunch of fabric when I do my foundation paper piecing. And this is uh, the scraps. I always save scraps so that I know that I'm not wasting fabric. And so I'm lining the, just the edge of my ruler up and cutting. And then for the fussy cut, because I wanted to get certain areas of the fabric here on, the patterns that I've designed, I'll set those up there. The patterns I've designed have dotted lines on them and everything, but I have also designed them so that this inside area is what's going to show when it's finished. And with my freezer paper pressed on and now I just I have cut along the seam line and this particular block measures the squares are going to finish at three inches so three inches so that's exactly what's going to show when I stitch this together and so with the freezer paper not on the fabric I just simply cut on two sides, folded it back, and you can see that is what's going to show on uh, when I sew this in because these are all stitching lines. And I've added extra fabric. I've tried to use as little fabric as possible and not waste anything and the scraps when I did the fussy cutting with this fabric these are just some of the scraps that I had left over and I still have a big piece of fabric left and this is actually what I'm doing all my testing on is um, I have a lot of poly cottons and so I'm using the poly cottons to um, do my test samples. And all the, all everything that's on this side here, those are churn dash blocks. And those are all poly cottons as well. So whatever it's everyone up to tonight. I gotta make sure I'm using my right mouse. I've got two computers going here. Okay, so I'm just playing around and uh, checking. Oh, one other thing that I wanted everybody to let me know is if you see an ad pop up I'm not sure how long I'm going to be live, but if you see any ads pop up, I'd like you to let me know. Um, I might be able to see them, and then again, I might not. But um, everybody, when they're doing lives recently, has been um, having these ads pop up when they're doing a live. And... Uh, Mary Jane, relax, you're relaxing, great. Um, so if you do you see an ad pop up, if I don't see it, oh, and I don't know where those little things are coming from, I don't know, did you just see a, a thumbs up? I have no idea where they're coming from. I've got something set up on my, my laptop and they keep coming up sometimes. <laughs> So, um, I don't know how it does that, but 
Anyway, so that's how I did my fussy cutting, and I did them with all, all the pieces that needed to be fussy cut. And again, using the freezer paper, I can uh, reuse it, and I just place it on my fabric, press it on, and then I can cut her cutting around. Karen Brown, so you're soothing your swollen fingers. Do you have arthritis? I know I was cutting the other day, and uh, the next morning I woke up and my hand was a little puffy, but... So I'm just going to continue on if you have any questions or whatever. Um, you can just ask away if not. Oh, Karen, yes, you do. So far, I don't have any um, swelling or anything in my fingers. I'm still able to use it. But I do have little bumps on the sides of my fingers and it's all on the outside not on the inside and when I went to the doctor and he said oh he said those bumps that bump is from your pencil and I said the pencil doesn't touch that part of my finger so you know how when you write sometimes you get a little callus here on your finger and uh, but I said no I said it's on the opposite side so and it's not on my not on my left hand just on my right hand so weird things so Gladys what are you up to I know you've been on Kathy's today I was just managed to pop in and just peek for a bit but uh, and it looks like I have missed cutting oh no that's okay it won't matter okay so I'm just gonna finish cutting these out and then I'll um, I have one one little pile wherever they are these are all my prints and I've designed the templates that you can label on here print or a solid. And if you have more than one print and you label your fabrics A, B, C, D, you can just write that in there. And so that way I didn't get mixed up. I knew exactly what fabrics I was cutting. And somewhere I may have lost all my blue prints. I don't know where they went. I know there should be more. No, wait a minute. Nope, that's all the blueprints I need. We'll find out when I go to sort these out. Okay, so I'll try to move some of this stuff out. Oh, here, just off to the side here, I do have, um, these are my um, templates for stitching. And they're all labeled the same. And it tells you where to fold and everything. And the dark lines on the outside are the cutting lines. And I work one row at a time. And then I square up that row. Yes, I... Gladys... Um, Gladys says she's trying to get her glaucoma straightened out with the new meds, yes. I know you've been struggling with that, and lately, I don't know whether it's because of the medications I'm on or what, but my eyes, I'm constantly taking my glasses off because I can see better with them off. Okay, I've got all my prints cut there, so now I'm just going to go and cut my my solid fabrics. And again, I designed it so I just line up whatever line. There's two lines. One is an eighth of an inch away, and the other one is a quarter of an inch away. So I just take and line up my eighth of an inch 
on my ruler with the dotted line take a sneak peek and see that I don't have any black showing on there and I don't so and if you like I cut off part of the black but it's okay because those other lines if you do cut off the black line you don't have to worry about it because you've got your quarter inch seam allowance right there so this is very forgiving you don't have to uh, worry about cutting where if I did this regular piecing by cutting my my squares and everything I'd have to be so accurate and if I made a mistake I'd have to go back and recut and then the other thing is sewing um, Karen I'm not offering them for sale they're free Yeah, uh, that's one of the things, like anybody, um, I went, before I got sick, I had, um, was going to do a giveaway for a $50 uh, gift certificate, and I was doing it on lives, so anybody who is, comments in the videos that I'm live, um, you have to be a subscriber for, I think I have it 10 minutes or something like that. So anybody from the videos that I did when I announced that, I will be, um, uh, I've got the list of names. I've taken all the names. So anybody who comments on the live videos, it has to be on the live videos, not in the comment section below the video after. And um, all the blocks that I'm using are um, free blocks that I find on the internet. I never use um, somebody's um, patterns that sell their patterns. I only use blocks uh, that are free blocks, just like the log cabin block. Um, there's a lot of free ones. Um, I think Gladys, um, uh, Gladys will be, um, knows that uh, there's many places to get free ones. And Karen, I think you're in the um, Chatterbox quilt crew, aren't you? I'm just going to wait until you... Um, because I think you're in the Chatterbox Quilt Crew. Um, we're coming up in that, in that group. There's, um, I think, yes. Okay. Um, uh, Kim said that she was, they were going to be doing mini thought we'd be doing mini quilt so if I can I am going to like this one I designed with paper piecing and this is a three and a half inch block I think it's three and a half inch block yep it's a three and a half inch block and there's 52 pieces in there and so what I thought I would do is I would design mini quilts mini blocks to be put into a mini quilt and offer the patterns or um, templates i don't call them patterns i guess they're templates so i would um uh, either through pdf or something like that um, because i can save my templates in a pdf form so that's what I'm going to try to do because I can I can design a block to be any size. So and um, now I'm just going to switch back and of course that's the wrong mouse. Um, okay, just give me a second here. Okay, here I am back. And so I'll give you a close up of this. It's kind of 
this is 52 pieces in a three and a half inch block and it I think the squares or the little the little squares are I think they might be half inch yes the little squares I don't know whether you can see this or not but find the right angle the little squares are half inch and of course I've used um, half square triangles I've used um, a square and a square um, I've done flying geese Yes, that's a flying goose because there's no seam down the middle. And uh, so as long as my health stays, every time I make plans, something comes up. And I've had, uh, just around Christmas time there, I had three family members pass away. And then yesterday, my brother-in-law passed away. So it's just like I got to keep my mind off of all the bad stuff. And uh, of course, now I haven't switched my camera back. There we go. So, but I am going to, like, I'm just showing you tonight just to check and see if everything is working and how long my cameras are going to last and see if we have any lag in the videos or not because I was having issues with that. And I was just petrified to go on a live and have to deal with that. But if everything is, is working... Thanks, Mary Jane. I appreciate that. But yes, I will... Um, you can do this same pattern with um, without freezer paper, but I just like the, the option of being able to reuse anything that I make. I can reuse it. And uh, I think... Um, the ones up there, I have, um, I do like roll A, B, C, and these are the papers that I used to make all those blocks. I usually do four at a time, and I'll cut four pieces of fabric and whatever, but, um, all those blocks, th those are all churn dash, and... Oh, good grief, Shirley. Me, I pull... I'm showing you things that you can't see. Anyway, all those blocks were made from four piece, four templates, the stitching templates, and um, I still have some here that I've been working on. So I have these already cut out to go. But I got bored, so I had to try something different. And, uh, but these are, and again, surely, I don't know what's wrong with me tonight. Yeah, anyway, these are all the, the fabrics that I was working one of those, and I got bored making them, so. But from four, four stitching templates, and um, I did cut out four fabric templates. But on some of them, if I stacked the fabric up to cut four, then I didn't have to use all the templates. In, but in case I want a fussy cut the next time I make a churn dash, and instead of using this, if I want a fabric, then I'll just, that has, I want a fussy cut, I'll just cut out along there, fold it back, and I've got my fussy cut piece, and I can still use it again. I'm not wasting all the... Um, the paper where you have to peel it off. So now I'm just going to finish cutting up here and we'll see how long everything goes. 
And remember, if you're, I don't know how many people are on here right now. It could be just you ladies that are commenting. Six viewers. Okay, so um, now I've got to go back to where I was. Okay, um, anyone who is listening in the background, uh, remember if you comment in the live chat, you will be entered to get for a giveaway of $50 gift certificate. However, because I announced this, I think it was way back in October before um, before everything went wonky on me, um, I have now upped it to a $60 gift certificate. And it'll probably be to Amazon or whatever. And it's the giveaway is open to anyone. It doesn't matter what part of the world you're in. I will make sure that I am able to get you the $60 in your currency, whatever your currency is, not my currency because I'm in Canada. And now it looks like I'm all done. Hmm, that didn't take long. That's one thing that I've found is that... Um, it doesn't take long to do this, and the next thing, and I'm cutting away, and the next thing is like, okay, I'm done. So now I have my solids, I have my prints, and now we're going to put them together. And we're going to start out by laying them out according to the um, my little sheet of paper. So here is my A piece of paper, but I'm not going to look at this. I am going to look at the finished diagram. And that's how I want to put them in here. So, oh, before I do that, I have to separate them into A, B, and C. So I'll separate my B's. Here's a C and an A, another C, A, A, very easy to do this organized. Now I'll go on to my solids. I've got a C, another C, another A, another B, And that's it. So now I'm going to put them in order. So we'll start with our row A. And I'm using little styrofoam sheets just so that if I have to move something rather than picking up a pile, they're all in order. So now because I've cut them out with the right side facing up, that's a solid. I'm going to lay them out exactly the way it's shown on the picture. So A1 is on the right side. And if I look at the diagram that I took off of the internet, A1 is on that side. So here's my A1. And I'm going to set it here. A2 is my blue, so I'm going to set it here. A4, I need A3, which again is my fussy cut print. And I didn't worry when I fussy cut this out that this is off to the side. Because if you look at the fabric itself 
it's all all in different directions so I just made sure when I fussy cut that out that I had just one of these little emblems in there I didn't want to cut it so that I was cutting a half of one so that's how that worked out for me so now and if I want I can just use my little mini iron and just press it back down and it's not going to come off and so three four and five and now all I'll do is just stack them up because I know I have them all and now they're all ready in order to be sewn together with my A stitching template and I can just fold this back like that and I'll tuck those just inside and I can put a paper clip on them or whatever, but they're all ready to sew now. So I just put a paper clip on. If I had more fabrics that I had cut, if I was doing like four blocks at a time, I would uh, uh, use a clip or whatever. But just above me, I have an ironing board. And on that ironing board, I have a magnetic strip so the paper clips I can anything that's magnetic it'll like my seam rippers here um, if I was cutting or something I can just tack that on there and then if I needed to move the whole thing I can just lift it up and move it out of the way so, um, also the little, I should show you too here, um, the little, what do they call them, wonder clips? They actually are magnetic as well. And I spent about two days trying to figure out when I saw them and I thought, oh, that would be really neat if I could, you know, take the wonder clips and... I'd have to put a magnet on the back of them. And it was like, wait a minute, the Wonder Clips have a magnetic thing on them, so they're going to stick. The only problem is sometimes the magnetic clip or the magnet <laughs> um, takes things that I really don't want them to. So now that's all ready to go. Hi, my favorite daughter shouldn't say that my other daughter might be listening <laughs> okay so that's got that set and so I'll need three just gonna put those back up there okay now what am I working on the other thing is like if I forget something well where was I it's easy to go back to where I was, so I'm working on row B. Here's my B pile. I need... I need a styrofoam. Give me one second, I'll be right back. And then back. I just needed a a styrofoam little tray to hold everything in. So there is my A row. So now I'm going to work on my B row, which is right here. And so now we're going to put B. So we'll start, okay, B1 is in the middle. I'm just looking at that. B2. Where does B2 go? B2 goes there. And B3 is over here. And B4 is up there. And B5, which is right there. So I have them all in order. So now I start with B1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. 
put them off to the side. Take my B stitching template. Hi, June. Nice to see you here. And again, if I wanted to, I could just paper clip that together just so it doesn't fall apart on me. And so A is done, B is done. Now we're going to go for C. So C, and I'm not going to look at the stitching template. I'm going to look at this template exactly the way it is here. So even if I'm following along here, I can see that C1 is a solid, so that's on the left-hand side, and it is on mine. C2, C3, C4, and C5. So those are now all in order. One, two, three, four, and five. And there is my stitching template. And again, I've written on here whether it's, uh, this is the print, this is the solid blue, solid blue, and print. And I did that all beforehand, and I have folded along the fold lines. So when I go to stitch this together, it's just a matter of just picking up the pieces and stitching them all together. B1, that's a bingo. Wait, wrong activity. You're right, Shelly, it's a wrong activity. <laughs> and I know someone commented because I had mentioned that my brother-in-law passed away and, uh, uh, but, uh, we're not really saddened by that as much as some people would have been. He wasn't the nicest person, so. Uh, paper clip. Why is it that I have to have everything right beside me? So is this making sense to anybody? Or is it all just Greek? I was watching your videos today, Shala, and you were having trouble with the... Um, uh, Shala is my daughter, by the way, and she has a... YouTube channel, Crafting Through the Chaos of Life with Shallow Frank, and all my cutoffs um, that I do, I give them to her because she makes junk journals, and she will be happy to know that in my little bag of goodies, I have a nice big piece nice big piece with words on it and um but yeah i said all this and here's some other scraps that i gave you some big scraps oh thanks everyone i'm glad it makes sense so this is what i send to my daughter and what she doesn't use i tell her either give me back the pieces i'll use them for stuffing or I will uh, just tell her to throw them away, you know, all the little tiny pieces, because some of the, they're not all 100% cotton. Okay, so that's pretty much um, pretty much how I do it. Now, as far as the um, uh, it, the blocks and everything. Um, so I've done the old made block. That's the one I'm working on now. I've done a um, churn dash. And I'm not sure which block I'll work on, but this is a nine and a half inch block. Now, if you wanted a block in a certain um, a certain size. I picked nine and a half because oh, I've also done a oh, where is it here? 
I've also done a churn, not a churn dash, that's the one I have. I've done a, um, I have, <laughs> um, I've done a friendship star. So I have all my pieces. And so I started doing nine and a half inch blocks. And this freezer paper is just craft freezer paper. But these are the templates that I used. And I think I only did, I've still got some of them to stitch up. Like I said, I get bored easily. So it's like stitch them up and put them, cut them up, get them ready to sew. So all of these, all of these blocks, some of them have uh, the printed centers and some of them have the white centers. I didn't fussy cut anything of this and I used fat quarters, just bundles of fat quarters in here. And uh, I, all of these blocks, this is the papers and I can still use them again. And I labeled it as well, pressed to the right side of the fabric, Friendship Star block, nine and a half inch unfinished. So those blocks will end up nine inches finished in the quilt. Like I said, I've got a whole bunch started. I don't even know. I think I've got four, eight. I don't even know. But I'm going to make a whole bunch of them. And the other thing is, um, when I label my fabrics, uh, because of what um, how, what I uh, I have fat quarters and yardages and everything, and to audition the fabrics that I'm using in the blocks. <clears throat> I needed a way to be able to distinguish them. So I scanned them in and put them in a file and then I labeled them. This is a fat quarter print and it's number 129. I think I started at 100. So don't get excited that I have 129 fat quarters. Maybe I do. I don't know. Maybe I do. Um... And I, it's freezer paper, and I iron it on. Uh, the other thing is I use freezer paper for absolutely everything. I use it to, when I have a fat quarter bundle, I'll uh, wrap a, my leftover strips. My leftover strips like this, I'll just wrap them around a fat quarter bundle and use the iron and press it off and then when I need to I can just pull it off and use it, use it again. So I'm the freezer paper junkie. I'm glad it's making sense. Um, it was just getting to that point but um, you don't have to. I can show you how to do this. You'll use a little more fabric than what I've designed these for, or designed the templates. But um, it's really simple. And in another video, I'll show you exactly how you can make your own. Um, make your own templates if you want to make a 12-inch finished block. You can do that, and it's it's very, very easy. But it's nice if somebody wants a printed copy or for, um, depending on how this goes over, if I get bombarded by people wanting the templates, um, some people don't have a printer. Some people... Um, that's supposed to, supposed to go back in here. 
Um, some people don't have a printer. Some people don't, um, they like to sew through the paper. So, you know, you can re request. Um, if you've never used the freezer paper method and you want to make a block or whatever, um, you can email me. My email is in the description below the video and uh, uh, I can as a, a first time whatever I'm not going to charge um, uh, I can print out uh, on freezer paper all the pieces like they would come I can either send you a printed copy just on regular paper to do one block or if you don't have a printer or for the first little while I can send you actually through mail it'll be in an um, an eight and a half or a nine by I think it's nine by twelve envelope and it'll have freezer paper copies in it. So you can try that and it'll be enough for one block. So if anybody's an in interested in that, just let me know. And those copies there, I ended up printing them off. I th was going to put freezer paper in my, uh, in my printer and uh, forgot to put the freezer paper in so okay um it is 7 52 and my watch is telling me it's time to stand so i will call it a night i might come back on tomorrow um in a live session and we'll stitch up this block so I'll say good night to everyone. Karen, Mary Jane, June. And I keep using the wrong mouse. Shala. Who else is here? Gladys. Okay, so we will say good night. Um, yes, I can do a PDF. The thing is, because I design my my um, patterns in the Silhouette Studio software, it I can print out a PDF, but it'll only print out one page at a time. So if there are four pages to <laughs> good night Karen good night June um, if there's four pages it'll come in four separate PDF files that's the only way I know how to do it right now so and thanks everybody and guess who Nancy I didn't see you here oh you're just tuning in Nancy sorry about that I'm uh, I will um, I will schedule a live this was just sort of impromptu now did anybody see any ads that's I guess I should say ask because people have been telling me that they can't do anything Lori Clark you made it too just at the end oh my goodness that's okay we can stay in chat for a while um, but if anybody saw any ads pop up everybody's saying that they they can't Okay, thanks, Mary Jane. No ads. Okay. So there is a way. Zoe? Oh, my goodness sake! Zoe's my granddaughter. You've been sneaking in the back. Oh, for heaven's sakes. Lori, too. Oh, my goodness sakes. I guess I should have scheduled for a little later or planned on staying live for a little longer. Um, 
Zoe is my very first granddaughter. No ads. Great. Yeah, people have been saying they can't do anything about the ads, and I just clicked a button and they're not showing up. I mean, nobody makes a lot of money off of YouTube, but it has helped me quite a bit. Yes, at the beginning there were ads, and there might be one at the end. But during the live, you can, um, you can uh, click something and it should eliminate the ads during, uh, during the, uh, the, the live video. So that's what I wanted to test out too because a lot of people have been complaining. The other thing is, I guess I should say, has there been any lagging? Can you hear me okay? Um, any glitches or anything like that? Because I know I did struggle for a while that I, it, it was glitching, things were cutting out. I guess you probably want to see me, right? I am here. There we are. I'm here. I was hiding. <laughs> I was hiding behind the camera. Well, thank you everyone for tuning in. I appreciate that. Thanks, Lori. I think, Lori, you're from Canada too, aren't you? You are in down east. Now, if somebody, if some, yeah, doing good, didn't notice any problems, good, good, all is good. Thank you, Shala. Thank you for letting me know. Thank you. Well, I guess I, uh, now that I know that there's some people on and everything, and yes, Ontario. Yes, I've seen some of your work, and I can't remember the name of your dog. Um, is it mm, starts with an M? No, maybe I'm wrong. Not Maxwell. No, maybe that's um, Kelly Cruz's. A... Thumbs up, everyone. Yes, we have to do the thumbs up. Lori, tell me the name of your dog. I'm sure it's you. I don't want to be telling everybody you have a dog. <laughs> For the short time I have been here, it has been great. Thank you, Nancy. I appreciate it. Marshall? Is that the name of your dog, Lori? I love the thing, Marshall's Dry Goods. We don't have Marshall's Dry Goods here, but <laughs> love that name, yeah. Marshall, okay. And Joyce, tuning in late, but yeah, it's great to see you. And Joyce, I've seen you now. I'm. I lurk in the background all the time. I really don't have a whole lot to say in the chats on lives and everything, but after a music amp, okay, Max, no, Marshall is named after a music amp. Well, everyone's saying hi to everyone. I'm not going to leave now. That would be terrible. Yeah, there's a delay reading the messages. Okay. Your son makes guitars and the name just fit. I know. Sometimes pets. Are named after funny things. Like the one cat 
you're live. Yes, Gladys is live. Is at Friday at 4 p.m. So I'll make sure that I don't don't go live at 4 p.m. on Friday. Um, um, I found a cat when I was working, when I was able to work, and uh, um, he was found in a um, hanging off of a garbage dump. So um, we named him Oscar. After Oscar the Grouch, who lived in a garbage can. <laughs> so, and Oscar's still alive. He lives with my daughter and her family because that's where I was living at the time. And her husband likes cats, so... I was able to bring him home, and we adopted him, and he has, oh gosh, he's got to be 14 years old. Shala, is that correct? Because he was, he was, um, I brought him home when you were pregnant, I think, because he used to live, or live on your belly. He used to lay on your belly. Yeah, delay in reading chat. I, I'm not sure if there's a way to, to fix that. But I could be just reading them. Um, oh, is he watching me? Oscar's watching me with Lexi. Lexi's my granddaughter, and I think Lexi is my youngest granddaughter, and Zoe is uh, my oldest granddaughter. Yeah, Shala says that Oscar is 15. Yes, because my grandson almost, what? Almost 16. Yes, okay. Yeah, because uh, the chat, the chat I had to um, make bigger because I can't read it. You think? Shala, do you think your mother needs new glasses? Yeah, I can't read the chat unless I put it on um, on a larger screen. So I'm watching. Um, I'm I'm watching uh, the chat on YouTube, and uh, okay. So I have been on now an hour. So I'm going to come back. Hopefully, maybe I'll come back tomorrow. Um, and chat with you again, and we'll sew up my old made block. And I guess that's appropriate. I'm old. I'm not old maid. No, I'm not an old maid. I'm an old widow. We should name a block Old Widow Block. Okay, so I will talk to you tomorrow, and uh, I will make a list of all the people who have commented in this video and put them... You're looking good to me. Good night, all. Okay, good night, everyone. Talk to you later.